Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about MHC class 2, Major Histocompatibility Complex 2. So, Major Histocompatibility Complex 2, structure, we are going to talk about the function of MHC class 2, the antigen presentation mechanism and process of MHC class 2, and also we are going to talk about the clinical relevance of MHC class 2. So, let's start with the very first topic that is the structure of MHC class 2. And here you can see a image, a simple drawing uh, that gives you the structure of MHC class 2. Now what are the components to it? You know in MHC class 2, uh, you can see that this is a cell membrane, okay, and this is the MHC receptor. Now the receptor is uh, made uh, with two alpha subunits and two beta subunits here. And you can see the alpha unit is anchored to the cell membrane, this is anchorage 1 by alpha and this is anchorage by beta, another anchorage by beta, second anchorage. So two anchorage is there. In contrast to the MHC class 1 where there is only one anchorage by alpha units only. So starting with the uh, most important difference between MHC class 1 and class 2 is that here. In MHC class 2 it is a heterodimer. Why hetero? Hetero means different. Dimer means made with two separate subunits. Heterodimer because it has two alpha and two beta subunit. The alpha chain is encoded by HLA DP alpha, HLA DQ alpha and HLA DR alpha. So DP, DQ and DR alpha are the alpha chains that are present. Next is the beta chain which is encoded by HLA DP beta, HLA DQ beta and DR beta. So again PQR beta that is the beta chain encoded by this gene. So these are the name of the genes, the HLA, uh, DP alpha, DQ alpha, DR alpha for alpha chain and HLA, DP beta, DQ beta and DR beta encoding beta chains. Next is the peptide binding groove. This is the peptide binding cleft or groove here between the alpha 1 and beta 1, okay, between alpha and beta 1 and binds to little lengthier size of peptide that is 12 to 25 amino acid long peptide. So MHC class 2 can bind 12 to 25 amino acid long peptide while MHC class 1 binds to 8 to 10, 12 uh, amino acid long uh, peptide. Okay, And transmembrane uh, and cytoplasmic domains are also found. So this is a transmembrane domain that we are seeing here. This is a transmembrane domain that is the domain is uh, transpanning the membrane. The protein is transpanning the membrane here. It's anchored to the membrane. Anchor the molecule to the cell membrane. And that is what it's all about. Okay, the anchorage is visible here. Now the expression of MHC class 2 molecules, what kind of cell express that? See, not all the cells express MHC class 2. It is expressed by uh, professional antigen presenting cells known as APCs. Okay. Uh, example dendritic cell, macrophages and B cell. These are the three professional antigen presenting cells of our body. Dendritic cells, macrophages and B cells. Now uh, B cells have their own receptor for that but here still they have MHC class 2. Okay, Dendritic cells express both class 1 as well as class 2 uh, MHC molecules. Uh, the expression of MHC class 2 is induced um, by interferon gamma and the release of interferon gamma cause increased expression of MHC class 2 in the surface of the APCs. And the tissue distribution is that it's highly expressed in the lymphoid organs such as lymph nodes and spleens are the place where MHC class 2 is mostly expressed. What are the functions of MHC class 2? The function is the antigen presentation and exogenous antigen presentation. Any antigen or a part of the pathogenic fragment, pathogenic peptide uh, is presented by this MHC class 2 molecule to CD plus, CD4 plus T cell or T helper cell or they can also showcase it to other cells of our immune system. Okay, but mark, markedly is the CD4 plus T cell known as T helper cell. They present this extracellular peptide which is nothing but an antigen to the CD4 plus T helper cell. Okay, the activation of CD4 plus T helper cell is done because the CD4 plus T helper cell along with the TCR connects to the 
uh, uh, peptide showcased by MHC class 2 and they also have a core uh, re receptor binding that is CD4 that is present here but the core receptor binding is also there that finally seals the whole process and triggers the T cell proliferation and the T cell number increase in the cell after this and it coordinates with the adaptive immunity because it uh, this act this activates the T, T helper cells to stimulate the B cell to convert B cell into the plasma cells and what plasma cells will do they are going to produce antibody so they are going to produce more and more antibody and this T cells also going to activate macrophage and the macrophage is and also the T cells are going to activate cytotoxic T cell or uh, CD8 plus T cell. So this CD4 T helper cell can activate B cell, it can activate macrophage, it can activate cytotoxic T cell and the, they do their job. Now the question is how exactly this process of antigen presentation is done by this uh, MHC class 2. Okay, how is it done? So in MHC class 2, you can see this picture explains this process very well, but I'm going to explain it slowly at a time. First is the antigen uptake. So the process of antigen uptake is this, this is the endogenous, exogenous antigen, the extracellular antigen or exogenous antigen, which is not our self material, which is a foreign material, a pathogens or a complete pathogen or a fragment of pathogen, which is engulfed by endocytosis, phagocytosis or pinocytosis, either of the method, they, they engulf it. Okay, and after engulfing, they form endosome. Then the processing will begin. What happens in the endosome is that in the endosome, you can see that uh, so the endosome is already formed after the engulfment. That is one side of the story. Story number one. Story number two is the production of story number two is the production of these MHC class two molecules, and they are actually produced inside the uh, endoplasmic reticulum and then to the Golgi apparatus. So this is in the Golgi apparatus and you can see that this blue colored structure is the MHC class 2 molecules but the peptide binding cleft is blocked by a protein known as clip, clip protein. So clip protein, clip peptide blocks the peptide binding groove and uh, from the ER to Golgi, from the Golgi they form a vesicle and the vesicle is now out on its journey to be fused with the cell membrane okay that is something now here what happened is that in this process where the endosome is already formed this endosome is fused to this vesicle so the fusion of endosome or lys lysosome whatever there, there, there is involved here endolysosome to this okay to this vesicle now once endosome is fused to the vesicle the endosomal content that is a fragment of bacterial or pathogenic peptides are released into this vesicle. Now once the fragment of pathogen is released, we know that inside this vesicle the clip, the number of clip is lower than the number of pathogenic fragments. So the pathogenic fragment will substitute clip and now bind to the peptide binding cleft. So in the peptide loading process, you can see that the, the, there is a chain, the invariant chain, also known as LI chain. Remember this LI chain already blocked the peptide binding cleft earlier. But I told you that it is cleaved. It is cleaved. Okay. This peptide exchange process will be done after the cleave because cleaving is done, then we call it clip. Now the clip will be substituted with the engulfed fragment of pathogenic peptide and there is a peptide exchange process which is facilitated by HLA-DM. This is HLA-DM. There are two different elements to HLA-DM and HLA-DO. What HLA-DM does is the process of peptide exchange. The clip part of the peptide is substituted with this pathogenic peptide and then once it is loaded to the MHC then this vesicle will fuse to the cell membrane and the MHC now will showcase uh, the pathogenic peptide to the T cell, T helper cells, CD4 T cells in the surface. That is the process. Now what is the role of these uh, MHC class 2? 
bacterial and parasitic infections they present extracellular pathogen that is a bacteria or parasite body fragments they fragment it chop it out and showcase it uh, to the t helper cell or cd4 t cell allergy and hypersensitivity is another uh, part of the uh, story it pre uh, presents allergens to the cd4 plus t cells and if falsely it presents allergens instead of pathogenic fragments to the cd8 that still cause sudden immune response because cd4 plus cells somehow cd4 plus t cells somehow recognize it whether it's allergen or pathogenic part doesn't matter whatever it is it is going to trigger array of immune response and allergic diseases vaccine responses critical for generating adaptive immunity so uh, that is another important part the clinical relevance of mhc class 2 is the immune evasion because the pathogens like mycobacterium tuberculosis they interfere with the mhc class 2 and interferes with the ability of the antigen presenting cells to showcase the pathogenic fragment using mhc class 2 okay next is the autoimmune disease linked to the hla alleles okay hla dr hla dq are the different genes and in type 1 diabetes a rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis are the different diseases which can be caused linked with the autoimmune uh, site uh, related to this hla dr and hla dq modifications these allele modifications transplant rejection mismatch of the mhc class 2 allele between the donor and recipient can trigger the graft rejection and diagnostics hla typing is very essential for organ transplantation where we know the makeup of hla between the donor and recipient before any kind of organ transplantation it's not only the blood tests but also the hla typing that is very very crucial before organ transplantation so the summary of mhc class 2 is that mhc class 2 presents extracellular or exogenous origin of antigenic fragments to the cd4 plus t cells or helper t cells next it is not present in every single cell but it is present in specific antigen presenting cells we call them professional antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells like uh, b cells okay uh, and macrophage the key of they, they have a key for adaptive immunity and coordinating the immune responses and dysregulation can lead to autoimmune disorders allergy and transplant rejections and this is very critical target for diagnostic and therapeutic interventions so that concludes our understanding of mhc class 2 molecule major histocompatibility complex 2 i believe you get a good idea from this video if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and colleagues subscribe to get more videos like this in future thank you